happy mister. This is Corporal Baker, home on his first furlough in over a year. He's a smart, clean-cut guy, and he's a good soldier. He's going to enjoy these days with his family. But right now, it's a good, warm feeling walking down Main Street, exchanging nods and handshakes with the people who've known him since he was a kid. Baker would never get by without a visit to the old drugstore for a Coke and a little chatter with anyone who might be around, just like the days before he went in the Army. Ah, it's good to be home. Sleeping late, no details, no formations, no marching, taking it easy. Money on the hip, faces that he knows. Mmm, what's this? One that he doesn't know. Now, this looks like a girl a man could go for. Not just for the fun, but for keeps. If only he could get to talk to her. Well, he could. It wasn't hard, because she wanted a straw, and it happened they were right in front of him. And that's the way it all started. It was a nice beginning, but it was only the beginning. She put the finishing touch to Baker's furlough and made it wonderful. She was all that a man dreams about, gentle and clean. She liked the simple things. Baker did, too. She didn't drink. She didn't like juke joints. She lived in the next block. Her mother and father were good people. She talked soft, and she seemed well-educated, like Baker. He enjoyed every moment they spent together. You can't blame Baker for enjoying those moments especially since she loved him. She told him so. You know how the army is about those things. They were going to write each other often, though, and that would take some of the edge off being apart. You sure were lucky, Corporal Baker. And all because a sweet girl came along and wanted a straw for her coat. Well, sit there, Corporal Baker, and have a good time while you can. Sit there and dream about the 10 days you had in heaven. Because in a few hours, you're going to find out just what sort of a furlough you really had. Yeah, 10 wonderful days in heaven. Gonorrhea, Baker. Gonorrhea? Why, I don't know how well, I... I do. You had a dirty woman. No, sir. A girl back home. She wasn't any prostitute. Have you known her long? Why, I met her the day I got home, sir. On the street or in a bar? Why, I don't mess around with street walks. I met her in the drugstore. Was she a pickup? No, sir. I just met her, that's all. And you had her that night? No, sir. The next night. And you didn't use a rubber? She was afraid of them, sir. Or a pro kit? No, sir. And you didn't go to a pro station? She looked clean, sir. She looked clean all over. Not on the inside, Corporal. Where you touched her, she was filthy and diseased. That girl of yours was just a pickup. Just what does it mean to have gonorrhea? Well, take this man. He used to be a star athlete. He caught gonorrhea and went to a drugstore instead of a medical doctor. Don't you take chances on being crippled like this. And this is the kind of thing gonorrhea means. Furthermore, it doesn't feel any better than it looks. 
Now, some dumb Joes think gonorrhea is caused by a strain, like lifting the rear end of a Jeep, or getting tired on a long march, or knocking yourself out on KP, or sliding into second. Well, that's plain crazy. The only strain that gives you gonorrhea is the strain of chasing after a woman. Well, you know what Corporal Baker's doing here in the dispensary waiting for treatments. What's this other guy doing here? He's Private Anderson, in the same outfit as Baker's. He's more of a playboy than Baker, but he's not a bad soldier. He's just out for the laughs, and the more of them, the better. He looks pretty unhappy right now, but imagine it's a week earlier. He didn't look so unhappy then. He'd just been paid, and tonight he's gonna cut himself a slice of good time. Anderson's idea of a good time is drinking and girls. He's had months of marching in KP, and this is his night to howl. Well, the prophylactic station's handy. He'll be coming back here for a pro after he's had his fun. Sure. Anderson will be stopping in at the pro station. Or anyway, that's what he thinks now while he's sober and can still think. Which isn't for long in joints like this one. It's the old setup. Girls, a jukebox, and a bar. Especially the bar with lots of liquor to lift you and see you way up in the clouds. Anderson was definitely out for a good time, but he didn't think he'd run into anything this good. She certainly was good looking. Hmm. Damn sight better looking than anything he expected to find in a place like this. Sure, he knew she was a whore. So what? Whores are supposed to keep clean, aren't they? Don't lots of places even have laws to make them keep clean? Anderson calls having a good time. And when it was over, it was time to take a pro because it's no good unless you take it right away. But Anderson didn't exactly feel like leaving. Not when he could lie around and have a smoke and then maybe for another two bucks. Well, he was out for a good time, wasn't he? And that's just what he was going to get. And maybe a little more he wasn't out for. Made you think she might be clean, Anderson. She was a prostitute. That's it, sir. I figured if being a prostitute was a job, she'd have to keep clean. Well, maybe she'd like to. But she can't if she takes on men one after another. Any man with a couple of dollars. But she had a car that said she was in good health. Uh, probably a week old. But even if it had been only an hour old, it still wouldn't mean a thing. 
she could have had a man with VD five minutes before she had you and pass his germs on to you. Yes, sir. You know, you might have stayed well if you'd gone to the pro station. I will next time, sir. There won't be any next time for quite a while, Anderson. You've got syphilis. Sweat it out, Anderson. But if it's any comfort to you, you're lucky. Some men aren't smart enough to go to a doctor when they get a case. This man, for example. He was a hero in the last war. But the wounds that have kept him in and out of the hospital ever since 1918 weren't from combat. He caught syphilis from a whore overseas and never went on sick call. This man looks as healthy as anybody. But the little syphilis germs have been making his blood bad and boring into his heart for a long time. And one day, the heart just quits. Yes, he looked healthy, but that's because syphilis doesn't do much advertising. Take a look at this one. He's really blown his top. When he talks, he doesn't make much sense. And sometimes he runs wild and has to be held in bed with straps so he won't hurt anyone. The syphilis germs got into his brain. Is your memory all right? So, I can remember anything that ever happened. Let me test your memory by giving you three words to remember. Well, the words are pink, Broadway, and 46. Pink? Would we? 46? I'll ask you what they were in a moment. Is your speech all right? Any, do you stumble over big words? Huh? Say after me, 3rd Riding Artillery Brigade. 3rd Riding Artillery Brigade? Say it again. 3rd Riding Artillery Brigade? 3rd Riding Artillery Brigade? That's enough. Now, what are the three words that I asked you to remember? I don't know. Pink. I can't remember. <laughs> this poor fellow's in mighty bad shape. And all because of... There are several venereal diseases, but the most common two are syphilis and gonorrhea. Some people call syphilis bad blood, pox, Louis a case, the dogs, and so on. Some people call gonorrhea the clamp, a strain, the running range, a dose. They all mean venereal disease, VD. It's a bad deal, and it's catching. And you catch it only one way, from a woman. Doesn't matter if she's a high school girl or a juke joint girl. Inside her, there may be sores full of crawling little germs, like these wiggling syphilis germs that stick to your skin like molasses. You get these germs and the gonorrhea germs only from a woman. But you don't get them if you use a condom or rubber. And if you put it on before you even touch a girl. Remember, if she tells you she doesn't want to use a rubber, she's up to no good. If she's afraid it might come off and get inside her someplace so that she'll need an operation to get it out, she's just crazy. Even if you tried, you couldn't force it inside any place where it could do harm. So don't let any woman talk you out of using one. The next best thing is to take a pro at the pro station. But take it as soon as possible after you've had your piece. The way they do it now, it doesn't hurt and it doesn't take more than a few minutes. It's a fine way not to catch VD. There's been talk by some stupid guys that a pro destroys your manhood, and if you have too many of them, you won't be able to have sex anymore. Well, anybody who thinks that is just ignorant. A pro doesn't hurt anything except germs. Another good way not to get VD is to use the Army's new pro kit. It was thought up just for men in the Army, and it works. It consists of a tube of ointment, a soap cloth, a piece of tissue, and some instructions. Now, here's all you have to do. Right after you've had sex, take a leak 
and wash yourself with a soap cloth. Then take the top off the tube and squeeze one fourth of it inside. It doesn't hurt and it doesn't sting. You can't even feel it. Squeeze the rest of the tube onto your fingers and rub it all over. It kills syphilis and gonorrhea before they can get started doing their damage. Well, those are the ways of keeping clean. The condom or rubber, the pro station, and the pro kit. But the simplest and best way of all is to stay away from women. Your army doctors know VD. So do your officers and non-coms. Listen to them when they teach you about syphilis and gonorrhea. They're trying to help you. They want us to become the healthiest people in the world. Don't be afraid to go on sick call as soon as you think you've caught BD. Don't be afraid and don't be ashamed. You won't be punished. No gigs, no loss of pay, no loss of rank. All the Army wants to do is cure you and send you back to civilian life healthier than you've ever been. You must keep yourself clean. Keeping clean means keeping healthy. And it was good health that beat the Germans before the war even started. This is Joe Lewis taking a few pokes at Hitler's boy, Max Schmeling. All of Joe's training was to get him in proper condition, proper health. This massacre you're looking at couldn't have taken place if Joe hadn't kept himself clean. Olympic Games in Berlin back in 36? A lot of our boys invaded Germany long before the first American soldier went down to the induction center. And they all knew the value of good health and of staying clean. That was Owens in the dashes and broad jump. And Johnson in the high jump. Woodruff and Edwards in the 800 meters. And Ralph Metcalf was one of the men who helped pile up our big score. Here he is now in a little bit of a hurry. Metcalf sent the stars and stripes up above the swastika and rising sun so often that Hitler and Hirohito should have taken the hint right there and quit. And here's Lieutenant Ralph Metcalf himself. Winning a race against tough competition means more than just being fast on your feet. It's training off of the field as well as on that gives you that extra speed when you need it most. I figured that life's that way too. The drive that helps you to break a record comes from being in shape, perfect shape. I don't say that I've won races just because I didn't fool around with women, but it certainly helped. Remember, Military fitness not only includes technical and mental fitness, but physical fitness as well. And that means not taking chances with women. That'll be good for you and for all of us. But maybe you don't want to stay healthy and keep yourself clean. Maybe you want to hop in bed with one gal after another. Well, maybe you'd like to hop into the same boat with these men. This man thought he was killing the VD germs by rubbing whiskey on his rod after he had a pickup. Whiskey doesn't kill anything, except the brain. This man didn't use a rubber because he'd been told it didn't feel so good with a rubber. Well, what he's got now really doesn't feel good. And this man, he had to pay a terrible price for catching syphilis. He married the girl he loved and passed the germs on to her. Pretty soon, she had a baby. It had syphilis, too. It would have been better dead. This is Paul Robson, who enjoys the respect and recognition of the entire world. From his college days, when he was an All-American end, through his great career as singer, actor, and world traveler, Mr. Robson has done as much good for our people as any man alive. Listen to him. What you've been seeing here makes a lot of sense. 20 years ago, we didn't have pictures like this. For hours, we had to sit and listen to the coach lecture. 
He gave it to us hot and heavy, and we took it. Because if you want to play football, you've got to have a healthy body. In fact, if you want to do anything in this world, you've got to have a healthy body. Now, this film is pretty frightening. Yet it's not as frightening as the records the War Department has shown me on VD. I tell you, we've got to do something about this, and we have the answer. You've seen it right here in this picture. None of us will forget what we've learned from this movie. But more important, let's not forget our responsibility to our communities, our families, and ourselves. We must defeat VD. Mm -hmm.